الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly the way he deserves to be praised and we ask Allah to exalt the mansion and grant peace and send his blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Brothers and sisters, I hear some noise in the background Please make sure it's all off Brothers and sisters, uh, this is wonderful uh, the opportunity to truly learn uh, the aspect of our, of our religion that has been sidelined, ignored um, and looked down upon to some degree um, is something that truly uh, hurts the Ummah. Uh, the subject of knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is according to His names and attributes and also understanding deviation and the deviant sects and how they came about and uh, the, how many of them exist all of these issues are rarely ever discussed and when discussed they're frowned upon as uh, a reason behind the division of the Ummah while the truth of the matter is uh, this is the, exactly the opposite the reason why the Ummah is in the state that it is in today is because we have misunderstood and have not given this subject matter its due right and we bicker and fight over minor things and we attribute our failure to external factors or to drugs or to uh, what have you but we rarely ever attribute our failure in certain areas to the fact that we as Muslims do not truly know who Allah is and I say this uh, while I'm sad but the truth is a lot of Muslims don't know who Allah Azza wa Jal is and this book aims to highlight the reality that the Sahaba were upon in terms of understanding who Allah Azza wa Jal is and Allah's names and attributes this book is a jewel and it is one of the most valuable books authored on the subject matter now a few uh, disclaimers or points that I would like to highlight number one we want to spread this content as much as possible not within like-minded people that's a given already but we want to reach out for those who usually differ with us in an attempt to build bridges with the ummah and not continue this division that we are suffering from sure when we all believe the same way we feel strong amongst each other and we strengthen one another because of that and then we seem to create a larger gap and further our relationship with the Muslims who don't see eye to eye with us but that is one of the reasons why prosperity has been deprived of this Ummah because we need to come together but never upon falsehood never in terms of compromise it has to be upon the truth the keyboard is loud it has to be upon the truth and therefore I would like I kindly ask you to take this class seriously some people were suggesting that I charge fees in order for people to take it seriously um, and I opt for the option not to involve any fees I want you to take it seriously for your own good secondly I want you to make an effort to share this with as many people as possible among your family we try to use simple language it's uh, uh, approachable it's uh, comprehensive, inshallah ta'ala, uh, nothing that requires uh, any special set of skills for you to be able to understand the content of the book that we'll be going over. And so I hope that is clear. Lastly, we will try to minimize, uh, please, interruption. I know because we're running Zoom and Facebook at the same time. Uh, in terms of interruption, uh, avoid uh, chatting or raising your hand unless there's a critical issue because it's difficult to juggle and, and you know, manage both. So without further ado, let us first uh, discuss the title and the author and the one who did the sharh. Uh, the book is uh, Al-Aqeedah Al-Wasitiyah, which was authored by Shaykh Sabah Ibn Taymi, whom we will discuss uh, momentarily. But 
the one who did the sharh or the explanation of this uh, virtuous book is Sheikh Muhammad uh, bin Salih bin Uthameen, also known as Abu Abdullah, rahimahullah ta'ala. The Sheikh had memorized the Quran before the age of 14. He was known for being a very studious student and he was into memorization. Um, he stood out among his peers uh, for his knowledge and for his ability to uh, use evidence, incite evidence, evidences when necessary. He studied among many mashayikh, but the sheikh and the mashayikh who, whom he was most influenced uh, by were none but the famous sheikh Abdurrahman bin Nasir al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, the author of the famous tafsir, Tafsir al-Sa'di. Tafsir al-Kareem al-Rahman fi Tafsir al-Kalam al-Mannan, one of the most one of the most eloquent tafsir and the most simplified tafsir in modern era. Uh, and Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasir al-Sa'di was uh, the major influence in the life of Sheikh bin Uthaymeen. Among his one shaykh also was Sheikh bin Baz, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. And of course none but Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin bin Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shanqiti, the famous author of the book Adwa al-Bayan, the famous tafsir. So his mashayikh were heavyweight. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah himself was heavyweight. He had authored more than 25 books. His students would reach over 500 during the class. Those were serious students, not just some, you know, somebody walking by and just stopping by. It was people that were adamant on learning from the Shaykh. And he, يعني, if you've ever heard Shaykh bin Uthaymeen, his voice, his approach resonates so well with the listeners. You cannot explain it. It's something that you cannot explain. It's a blessing that Allah Azza wa Jal places in people. And uh, Shaykh bin Uthameen rahimahullah was blessed in that sense. I mean, you hear his, his uh, classes and uh, his explanations and you, you develop immediate love uh, for the Shaykh. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to encompass him with his mercy among with all the scholars and all the ulama of the ummah. Tayyip, uh, now... Jumping into uh, Sheikh al sabah bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Actually, I'll give you the introduction uh, that the Sheikh gave, and I think it will do justice uh, to that. I'm just going to scroll down here. I, I hope you've downloaded the PDF book, uh, the PDF version. Uh, we posted it on Facebook. You go to that website, and you will see two green icons under Juz al Awwal wa Juz al Thani. When you click on it, it will download the PDF. Um, it's very easy for you to follow. I recommend that you have the PDF version so you can follow and be able to uh, take notes on the book if necessary on your own paper. You can write down the English equivalent of some Arabic words that we will be discussing. Yani, it will make it more productive and beneficial for you. So Al Muqaddima of the Sheikh says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabihi ajma'in. Uh, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, and we ask Allah to exalt the mention and send peace upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَإِنَّ أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَإِنَّ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ الَّذِي يُسَمَّى الْعَقِيدَةُ الْوَاسِطِيَّةُ أَلَّفَهُ حَبْرُ الْأُمَّةِ فِي زَمَانِهِ أَبُو الْعَبَّاسِ شِيخِ الْإِسْلَامِ أَحْمَدْ بِنْ عَبْدِ الْحَلِيمِ بِنْ عَبْدِ السَّلَامِ بِنْ تَيْمِيَ الْحَرَّانِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ الْمُتَوَفِّي سَنَةَ 728 هِجْرِيًا The book is called Al-Aqidah Al-Wasitiyah. It was authored by the, the big, one of the biggest scholars. One of the biggest scholars of this Ummah, Abu Al Abbas, Sheikh Al Islam, Ahmed bin Abdul Halim bin Abdul Salam bin Taymiyyah Al Harrani. He died in the year 728. I'm just going to go skip the Arabic and give you the English equivalent quickly so we will not waste time on the introduction. Uh, Sheikh Al Sabah bin Taymiyyah was, was uh, an icon for standing uh, to the truth, representing the truth, and warning against falsehood and uh, deviant sects and anything and anyone that opposed the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This book Al-Aqidah al wasitiyah was uh, an actual, it's a very small uh, abridged uh, uh, booklet that he authored when a man from the uh, judge from uh, an area called Wasit came to him uh, complaining about the distortions that the people have introduced uh, into the names and attributes of Allah. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah wrote this little letter, what they call a letter that eventually was expanded upon and explained extensively uh, to address this issue. And it became the crux of the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It became the crux of the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah 
specifically for people that uh, are philosophical and refer to he said and she said and the sheikh said and maulana said and that type of stuff you take it back to the source the quran and the sunnah now the sheikh says before we uh, delve into this let us first address certain fundamentals uh, أن جميع رسالات الرسل من أولهم من أولهم نوح عليه الصلاة والسلام إلى آخره محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كلها تدعو إلى التوحيد. The first thing is that all of the messages messages and all of the messengers from Nuh to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم they were calling their people to monotheism and توحيد. The worship of Allah alone. Allah says in the Quran قال الله تعالى وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوح إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فعبدون. And we have not sent before you a messenger except that we inspired him saying, inspired to him saying, there is no God worthy of worship, worthy of worship but I therefore worship me. This is in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 25. In Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 36, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ and verily we have sent forth in every nation a messenger saying to the people, Worship Allah alone and avoid false deities. So this is a fundamental principle. And it's important because if Islam is going to be changed and modified to resemble what happened in Judaism and Christianity by turning away from the purpose of life and the purpose of the message and the messenger into uh, focusing on other areas while missing out on matter of Tawheed, then we are no different than any other nation on earth that has lost its connection with its Lord. That's why it's very important to understand that the fundamental principle every messenger came to highlight was the worship of Allah alone. Tawheed is the most important thing you will ever understand, you will ever learn, you will ever, uh, ever adhere to, and you will ever implement in your life. There isn't anything more valuable than knowing Tawheed. You could be the greatest engineer, the greatest architect, the greatest doctor, all of the knowledge of the world put together, if we put them on one side of the scale, and you understand in قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ Then the understanding of Surah Al-Ikhlas will outweigh all of this knowledge that the world has. Because all of the knowledge that humans have, if it's not going to save them from the punishment of Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, then they're not getting anywhere. Then it's not get, going to get anywhere if it's not going to save them from the punishment of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the, the Hellfire. And so that's why it's important to understand the, the virtue of Tawheed. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ الْخَلْقَ خُلِقُوا لِوَاحِدٍ وَهُوَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ خُلِقُوا لِعِبَادَتِهِ لِتَتَعَلَّقَ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِهِ تَأَلُّهًا وَتَعْظِيمًا وَخَوْفًا وَرَجَاءً وَتَوَكُّلًا وَرَغْبَةً وَرَهْبَةً That is the creation was created for one creator. And it is Allah Azza wa Jal. We were created to worship Him, for our hearts to be attached with Him. Uh, out of exaltation, out of veneration, out of fear, out of hope, out of reliance, out of uh, awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, longing and awe to Allah until we are, until we throw away and distract our, and, and detach ourselves, I'm sorry, from everything in this dunya that does not aid us in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, لِأَنَّكَ أَنْتَ مَخْلُوقٍ لَبُدَّ أَنْ تَكُونَ لِخَالِقِقٍ because you're the creation, it is inevitable and it's a must that you are totally belonging to your creator, both internally and externally, meaning your physical body and your soul and your belief. وَلِهَذَا كَانَتْ دَعْوَةِ الرُّسُلْ عَلَيْهِمُ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ إِلَى هَذَا الْأَمْرِ الْهَامِ الْعَظِيمِ عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ That's why the uh, invitation of the messengers was to this great matter, and that is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone with no partners with Him. وَلَمْ يَكُنِ الرُّسُلُ الَّذِينَ أَرْسَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِلَى الْبَشَرِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى تَوْحِيدُ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ كَدَعْوَتِهِمْ إِلَى تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ مُنْكِرِي تَوْحِيدُ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ قَلِيلُونَ جِدًّا وَحَتَّى الَّذِينَ يُنْكِرُونَهُمْ فِي قَرَارَةِ نُفُوسِهِمْ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ أَن uh, we're not only calling the people to the Tawheed of Rububiyyah, which we will explain later, meaning the Lordship of Allah. 
like they were calling them really to the Tawheed al uluhiyya the oneness of the worship of Allah. That is because those who denied the Lordship of Allah were very small in number. And even those who denied deep down inside, they knew. They can't deny the Lordship of Allah. Now, of course, today, if we want to, if we want to link, link this with, with uh, today, while atheism and agnosticism, uh, agnosticism is on the rise, then one will say, well, how do we correlate between the two? And the truth is, regardless, the atheist remain to be a minority in this world. With all of their efforts, they remain to be a minority versus the vast majority of people who believe in God. Whether they believe in the right God like Muslims or false gods like Christians and Hindus and Buddhists and so on and so forth. The bottom line, the theism still outweighs atheism. Regardless, the atheist deep down knows that he's a bluff. And no matter what they say, no matter how they sort it out, no matter how they try to act, no matter how they articulate their speech and how eloquent they are, deep down in their heart, they know that they're going against the fitrah, the natural disposition Allah created upon, and that is that they know that Allah is their Lord. They know there's a creator. But it's more practical to reject him. Ala kulli hal. اللهم إلا أن يكون قد سلب العقول المدركة أدنى إدراك unless a person completely lost his mind which is the case with most atheists فإنهم قد ينكرون هذا من باب المكابرة that is how they rejected out of pride and arrogance and that is the key factor that the people can reject out of arrogance وقد قسم العلماء رحمهم الله التوحيد إلى ثلاثة أقسام the scholars have divided توحيد into three parts three categories the first of which, or one of them is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the oneness of the Lordship of Allah. وهو إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى في أمور ثلاثة في الخلق والملك والتدبير. This is where you need to pay attention, take notes and memorize. And that is to single out Allah Azza wa Jal in three matters. في الخلق, in creation, والملك, in ownership or sovereignty. وَالتَّدْبِيرِ in the arranging of affairs. So we identify the rububiyyah of Allah through three main titles. Of course, under those there are many subtitles, but the fundamental three aspects are creation, ownership or sovereignty, and arranging of affairs. دَلِيلُ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The evidence for that is the statement of Allah. أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 54. Verily to him belongs the creation and the command. وَوَجُّ الدَّلَالَ مِنَ الْآيَةِ أَنَّهُ قَدَّمَ فِيهَا الْخَبَرَ الَّذِي مِنْ حَقِّهِ التَّأْخِيرِ The point of reference in the ayah is that the predicate of the sentence has been put forward even though it's supposed to be delayed in the sentence. The predicate, the predicate of the sentence you have the subject and the predicate. When the predicate of the sentence is put before the subject, even though naturally in a proper linguistic sense, it's supposed to come after. When you put forward what is supposed to be left, when you put forward what's supposed to be in the back, this indicates uh, specificity and exclusivity. ثم تأمل افتتاح هذه الآية بألا الدالة على التنبيه والتوكيد. Even pay attention to the introduction of the ayah with ألا. ألا له الخلق والأمر. ألا indicates توكيد emphasis. It's basically alerting you to this and emphasis. ألا له الخلق والأمر لا لغيره. Meaning it is only only belonging to Allah, the creation and the command, not to anybody else. فالخلق هذا هو والأمر هو التدبير. So this is the creation and the command is the arranging of affairs. So both, we said there are three. الخلق والملك والتدبير. الخلق, الخلق عفوا. الخلق. الخلق والتدبير are in the same ayah. ألا له الخلق, ألا له الخلق والأمر. الأمر is التدبير, so now they connected. Now we still have الملك. أما الملك. فدليل فدليله مثل قوله تعالى ولله ملك السماوات والأرض. مثل سورة الجاثية آية 27. An example and to Allah belongs what is in the heavens and the earth. فإن هذا يدل على انفراد سبحانه وتعالى بالملك. That indicates the exclusivity and the singling out of Allah عز وجل in ownership and sovereignty. 
واوجد دلاله من هذه الايه كما سبق تقديم ما حق في ما حقه التاخير اتس ذا سيم برنسيبل when the predicate of the sentence is put before the subject this indicates exclusivity for example to make it uh, relevant to you if i said i went to the market i went to the market i is the subject to the market is the predicate all right now uh, if i say i went to the market it does not mean that i didn't go anywhere else and it does not mean that others didn't go either but when i say to the market i went this shows a bigger and a more a particular meaning and a bigger emphasis that to the market strictly I went. Do you understand? So that is a, this may not be applicable in the English language, but I'm giving you the relevance in the English language, in the, in the Arabic language, this is the principle of balagha. It's a form of eloquence in the language. So I hope that is clear. إذن فالرب عز وجل منفرد بالخلق والملك والتدبير. Therefore, Allah عز وجل is the one who can be singled out in creation and in sovereignty and ownership and in arranging the affairs. فإن قلت كيف تجمع بين ما قررت وبين إثبات الخلق لغير الله مثل قول تعالى فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين. If you say how do you bring a relation between what you just what you aforementioned what was aforementioned and declared and between the fact that Allah عز وجل says so blessed is Allah, the best of creators, uh, indicating that there are other creators with Allah. Now pay attention. You're saying Allah is the only creator, and yet we're seeing here, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ Blessed is Allah, the best of creators, indicating that there are other creators with Allah. وَمِثْلِ قَوْلِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فِي الْمُصَوِّرِينَ يُقَالُ لَهُمْ أَحْيُوا مَا خَلَقْتُمْ Or similar to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ about those who make images, it will be said to them, Give life to that which you have created. And I want to take a little pause here to discuss the matter of taking pictures because I know it's relevant and I don't want to confuse the people. Uh, as many of you know, I used to be of the opinion, uh, the Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Al-Albani's opinion, rahimahullah, fundamentally about the prohibition of taking pictures with the camera. Um, and that's because uh, I was persuaded by the Sheikh's approach, rahimahullah. However, it's been a while now and I've, uh, I've gone through uh, some material, a lot of material on the issue and I've, I've looked into it multiple times and uh, I've come to the conclusion that the, that ruling is not sound. Uh, that is, I'm just to give you a brief explanation, it's because the illa in the prohibition is that we, the person who's taking pictures is emulating and trying to compete with Allah and the quality of creating. And we all know that that applies when you draw a picture of a being, it applies when you sculpture a picture, but does it apply when you snap a picture of an existing creation of Allah? It's like it, you're captured in the moment. And uh, the Sheikh Albani rahimahullah, did not highlight or did not address this issue back then, but I've heard a lot of contemporary scholars, of course, Sheikh Ibn Uthameen himself had an opinion of uh, allowing it. Uh, a lot of the big mashayikh were uh, of the opinion of allowing it. A lot of the fellow du'a that I knew were, were fine with it. And uh, I always, you know, uh, looked into this uh, matter closely and I personally have changed my stance. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go take pictures, nor am I saying that this is not a, a matter of, uh, you know, gray area or confusion. But I am, when you are convinced about an opinion, then you act upon it. You don't have to follow it, but if you see some picture, then at least understand my reasoning. Don't think that I'm just being funny with this stuff. Uh, because you cannot be funny with this type of stuff. Anyways, so the hadith says, أحيو ما خلقتم ومث قوله تعالى في الحديث القدسي ومن أظلم من من ذهب يخلق كخلقي Or in the hadith القدسي, Allah says, who is more oppressive than he who goes to create like my creation. فكيف تجمع بين قولك أن الله منفرد بالخلق وبين هذه النصوص? Now there's a contradiction or what appears to be a contradiction. You're saying that Allah is the only creator and yet we have texts that suggest that there are others who are creating with Allah. فالجواب أن يقال إن الخلق هو الإيجاد وهذا خاص بالله تعالى. The answer is the true meaning of creating is making something from scratch. To bring forth from nothingness. And that is strictly specific to Allah. أما تحويل الشيء من صورة إلى أخرى فإنه ليس بخلق الحقيقة. As for you converting something from one state to another, it is not truly creating وَإِنْ سُمِّيَّ خَلْقًا بِاعْتِبَارِ التَّكْوِينَ Even though we may use the term created uh, in terms of making something. For example, you create a Word document. You create a file. You create an area in your house for worship. 
Now, we all use the term create, but no one thinks that created from nothingness. You used an existing thing and you converted it into another state and therefore you've done some form of creation. As for the ultimate one, then that only belongs to Allah. لكنه في الواقع ليس بخلق تام فمثلا هذا النجار صنع من الخشب بابا so the carpenter he makes from the wood a door فيقال خلق بابا you say he created a door لكن مادة هذه الصناعة التي الذي خلقها هو الله عز وجل but the, the material which he used to create was created by Allah سبحانه وتعالى لا يستطيع الناس كلهم مهما بلغوا في القدرة أن يخلقوا عود أراك أبدا ولا أن يخلقوا ذرة ولا أن يخلقوا ذبابا humans will never ever no matter what level they reach they will never be able to create not even uh, a siwak or even an atom or even a fly all of the cloning that they do is using something Allah created to make another one but they can't do anything from scratch and that's a very strong argument subhanallah it's a very strong argument واستمع إلى قول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس ضرب مثلا فاستمعوا له إن الذين تدعون من دون الله لن يخلقوا ذبابا لو ولو اجتمعوا له وإن يسبهم الذباب شيئا لا يستنقذوه منه ضعف الطالب والمطلوب الله says in the Quran O oh people O oh humans an example have been struck so pay attention listen attentively all of those whom you call on besides Allah, they will not be able to create a fly and even if they all came together and cooperated with one another to do so. And if the fly were to take something from them, they can't even retrieve it. So the one asking and the one being asked are both in the state of utter weakness. Um, the Shaykh will go on to explain this ayah. And so we will skip it inshallah ta'ala for uh, brevity purposes. And the same thing says about uh, the, the mulk, the matter of mulk, that you own something, you have an ownership, uh, and then again, you are basically sub-owning something that Allah Azza wa Jal owned. You do not have the ownership in the ultimate sense because everything and everyone and everything you do belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ultimate sense. Lastly, as the matter of tadbir, insan, the same thing. You arrange affairs, but your arrangement of affairs is arranged by Allah. And how many times you make a plan, you know, you plan, how many of us plan to go on vacation this year back home? Hello, coronavirus. How many of us plan to be, uh, you know, working from home? We've made all types of plans. Humans all over the world have arranged all types of affairs. But which affair was the uh, prevalent one? The one Allah Azza wa Jal arranged. We're all in the state of submissiveness. Every human being on earth has no choice but to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taib, al-qasm al-thani tawheed al-uluhiyya, the tawheed of, of uh, worship of Allah azza wa jal, or the divinity of Allah, if you may use that. Wa huwa ifradu Allah azza wa jal bil-ibadah, bi alla takuna abdan li ghayr Allah. It is to single out Allah azza wa jal, the exalted, the sublime in worship, and that you do not become a slave to anyone or anything but Allah. لا تعبد ملكا you don't worship uh, an angel or ملكا a king in this case ولا نبيا nor a prophet ولا وليا nor a person who's close to Allah ولا شيخا nor a sheikh ولا أما nor mother ولا أبا nor a father لا تعبد إلا الله وحده you worship Allah عز وجل alone فتفرد الله عز وجل وحده بالتأله والتعبد so you single out Allah عز وجل in you uh, enslaving yourself and in worship to him وَلِهَذَا يُسَمَّ تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ That's why it's called تَوْحِيد الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ uh, وَيُسَمَّ تَوْحِيدُ الْعِبَادَةِ It is also known as تَوْحِيدُ الْعِبَادَةِ meaning the oneness of worship فَاعْتِبَارِ إِضَافَتِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْحِيدُ هُوَ تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ When you are referencing it to Allah Azza wa Jal, it is تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ And when it is referenced and returned to the slave, it's تَوْحِيد Huma al mahabbatu wa ta'zim. Worship is built on two fundamental pillars love and uh, veneration. Love and veneration, I'm sorry. Love and veneration. An natiju an huma, anna hum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati wa yadu'una na ragaban wa rahaba. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Anbiya ayah 90, very they used to hasten in good and they used to worship us ragaban. 
وَرَهَبَ فَالْمَحَبَّ تَكُونُ رَغَبًا meaning in, in desire they, they wanted it they, were, they needed it وَرَهَبًا in a state of fear فَالْمَحَبَّ تَكُونُ الرَّغْبَ وَبِالتَّعْظِيمُ تَكُونُ الرَّغْبَ وَالْخَوْفِ so you, you venerate Allah Azza wa Jal through fear of Him and being in awe of Him and when you long to Allah the longing is established through the love وَلِهَذَا كَانَتِ الْعِبَادَ أَوَامِرٌ وَنَوَاهِ That's why عِبَادَة is do's and don'ts, commandments and prohibitions. أَوَامِرٌ مَبْنِيَ عَلَى الرَّغْبَةِ وَطَلَبِ الْوُصُولِ إِلَى الْأَمْرِ Commands, commandments which are based on, on uh, longing and wanting to reach a destination, reach the matter. وَنَوَاهِ مَبْنِيَةٌ عَلَى الْتَعْظِيمِ وَالرَّهْبَةِ مِنْ هَذَا الْعَظِيمِ And prohibitions that are based on awe and fear of that prohibition. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ رَغِبْتَ فِي مَا عِنْدَهِ If you truly love Allah عز و جل, then you will, you will desire and long to that which He has. وَرَغِبْتَ فِي الْوُصُولِ إِلَيْهِ And you will long to reach Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَطَلَبْتَ الطَّرِيقَ الْمُوصِلِ إِلَيْهِ And you will fetch for the path that will lead you to Him. وَقُمْتَ بِطَاعَتِهِ عَلَىٰ أَوْجَهِ الْأَكْمُلِ uh, 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 عَلَىٰ الْوَجْهِ الْأَكْمَلِ And you will, you will strive to obey Him in the, in the most perfect uh, sense that you're able to. وَإِذَا عَظَّمْتَهُ خِفْتَ مِنْ And if you, uh, if you uh, venerate Allah, then you will fear Him. كُلَّمَا هَمَمْتَ بِمَعْصِيَةً Every time you're about to commit a sin, إِسْتَشْعَرْتَ عَظَمَةِ الْخَالِقِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ You bring to mind the greatness of the Creator عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَنَفَرْتْ So you will turn away from it. وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَنْ رَأَ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ Allah says in Surah Yusuf regarding Yusuf and, and she had, had the intention to, to be with him and he had a similar intent had he not seen the proof of his Lord and such Allah Azza wa Jal said that لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ so we may remove from him any type of evil and uh, abhorrent act فَهَذِهِ مِنْ نِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ this is from the bounty of Allah upon you إِذَا هَمَمْتَ بِمَعْصِيَةَ وَجَدْتَ اللَّهَ أَمَامَكَ If you are about to commit a sin, you find Allah Azza wa Jal before you. فَهِبْتَ وَخِفْتَ وَتَبَعَدْتَ عَنَ الْمَعْصِيَةِ So you become fearful and you're in awe and you turn away from the sin. لِأَنَّكَ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ رَغْبَةً وَرَهْبَةً Because you worship Allah in longing and in fear. فَمَا مَعْنَ الْعِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادَةِ تُطْلَقُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرَيْنِ عَلَىٰ الْفِعْلِ وَالْمَ and the, uh, the result or the outcome of the action. تطلق على الفعل الذي هو التعبد فيقال عبد الرجل ربه عبادة وتعبدا It is used to describe the action. You say this person worshipped his Lord in the state of worship and you know enslaving himself to him. وإطلاقها على التعبد من باب إطلاق اسم المصدر على المصدر. Now if we enter into this area of grammar then it will get a little complicated so uh, pardon me, I will, I will uh, because I want this to be relevant to the biggest number of people. If we get too technical, then we will miss out on some things. So I will skip some of the grammatical issues, which uh, may be only relevant for the advanced uh, students. طيب. Uh, المهم, then the, the idea is that عبادة ولله العزة ولرسوله As the Sheikh says, وكل من ذل لله عز لله Whoever humiliates himself for Allah has actually honored himself for Allah, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتُطْلَقْ عَلَى الْمَفْعُولْ عَيْلْ مُتَعَبَّدْ بِهِ And then it's also used to describe the act of worship itself. وَهِيَّ بِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى تُعَرَّفِ مَعَرَّفَ بِهِ شَيْخِ الْسَمْبِ تَيْمِيَةِ So this is the meaning that Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah gave. حَيْثُ قَالْ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ الْعِبَادَةُ إِسْمٌ جَامِعٌ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَعْمَالِ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْبَاطِنَةِ He said, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ عِبَادَةُ Worship is a comprehensive term that encompasses everything that Allah loves and is pleased with of verbal statements and action whether they are external or internal whether they are visible or hidden and concealed in any case this is the ultimate way of uh, understanding the term ibadah ibadah is a comprehensive term that includes everything that allah loves everything allah is pleased with every statement you make every action whether it is seen whether it is hidden all of these are under the title ibadah 
Tawheedu, uh, Tawheedu Allahu bih. So the same thing which we worship Allah with should be only for Tawheed as well, only for Allah. لا يصرف لغيره. It should not be given to anyone but Him. قص كالصلاة والصيام والزكاة والحج والدعاء والنذر والخشية والتوكل. Such as fasting, uh, sorry, uh, praying, fasting, paying zakah, performing Hajj, supplication, uh, any vow that you make. Fear, reliance, ila ghayri dhalika min ibadat. All of these other acts of worship should be only for Allah. فَإِنْ قُلْتْ مَا هُوَ الدَّلِيلِ عَنَا عَلَى أَنَّ اللَّهَ مُفَرِدٌ بِالْأُلُوهِيَّةِ If you ask, what is the evidence that Allah deserves to be singled out in worship? فَالْجَوَابُ هُنَالِكَ أَدِلَّةٌ كَثِيرًا There are many evidences. مِنْهَا قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لا and the second ayah also quoted earlier, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ We have sent forth among every nation that you should, uh, a messenger saying to them, worship Allah alone and avoid false deities. I mean, that's as clear as it gets. And by the way, that's لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَيْضًا قَوْلُ تَعَالَى شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَأُولُ الْعِلْمِ uh, Allah bears witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except He, except Him. And so do the angels, and so do those who have given knowledge. Uh, Al Imran, Ayah 18. لو لم يكن من فضل العلم إلا هذه المنقبة حيث إن الله ما أخبر أن أحدا شاهد بألويتي إلا أول العلم نسأل الله أن يجعلنا منهم. Look at the virtue the Sheikh said of the knowledge. If there isn't any other virtue except this, then it would be enough that Allah Azza wa Jal made those people among those who bear witness along alongside Him and the angels that they bear witness that there is لا إله إلا الله. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us among them. Shahid Allah anna hu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaikatu wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil qist ay bil adil. Allah has established injustice. Thumma qarrara hadhi shahada wa qawlih la ilaha illa huwa al aziz al hakim. There is no deity worthy of worship except him, the full of might, the all wise. فهذا ضليل دليل واضح على أنه لا إله إلا الله عز وجل أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأنتم تشهدون أن لا إله إلا الله. This is a clear evidence that there is no deity except Allah. I bear witness that there is no God worthy worship but Allah, and so do you. هذه الشهادة الحق. This is the true testimony. فإذا قال قائل كيف تقرونها مع أن الله تعالى يثبت آلهة غيره؟ how do you establish that when Allah Azza wa Jal Himself has established the, uh, the, the Aliha, the gods, other gods? Allah has proven and established the existence of other gods in the Quran. مثل قوله تعالى لا ولا تدعو مع الله إلها آخر. Do not call on another god with Allah. Allah says, إله آخر. Allah called him another god. In Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 88. ومثل قوله وما يدعو مع الله إله آخر. لا برهان له به. And whosoever calls on onto another god other than Allah whom he has no evidence for. Once again, Allah Azza wa Jal establishing the presence of other aliha. ومثل قوله فما أغنت عنهم آلهتهم التي يدعون من دون الله من شيء. Or like the statement of Allah and the the lords or the gods whom they were calling on besides Allah did not aid them or assist them or suffice them or save them in anything. ومثل قول إبراهيم أئف كان آلهة من دون دون الله تريدون false god do you erect and make false gods other than Allah is that what you want إلى غير ذلك من الآيات كيف تجمع بين هذا وبين الشهادة بأن لا إله إلا الله so how do you bring a relation between the fact that Allah established the existence of other gods and the fact that we say لا إله إلا الله فالجواب أن ألوهية ما سوى الله ألوهية باطلة the, the lordship or the uh, godship of anyone but Allah is nothing but false godship. Mujarra tasbiya, it's merely a name. In hiya illa asma'un sammaytumuha antum wa aba'ukum ma anzal Allahu biha min sultan, as Allah says in Surah Al Najm. It is nothing but names that you've made up, you and your forefathers. Allah sent down no authority concerning it. Fa'uluhuyatiha batila, it is a false god. وهي وإن عبدت وتؤل تؤلها إليها من 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 ضل فإنها ليست أهلا لأن تعبد. Even though it is worshipped and many people devote themselves to it who are misguided, it does not make it worthy of worship. فهي آلهة معبودة لكنها آلهة باطلة. It is a worshipped god, 
but it is also a false god. Allah says in Surah Luqman, Ayah 30, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ That is because Allah is the true, is the truth, and all of those whom they call on besides Him are falsehood. وَهَذَانِ النَّوْعَانِ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ التَّوْحِيدِ لَا يُجْحِدُهُمَا وَلَا يُنْكِرُهُمَا أَحَدْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقِبْلَةِ الْمُنْتَسِبِينَ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ Those two types of tawheed are actually not rejected uh, or, or opposed by anyone who belongs to Islam. Of course, we will exclude grave worshippers because they don't belong to Islam. But in terms of those who are understanding of the religion, then there's no issue with that. They know Allah is the only Lord, they know Allah is the only one worthy of worship. But actually, uh, some time after, uh, people, uh, some people claimed that they gave a title of Lord to some of the creation. Like the extremes, uh, the extremists among the Shia. They say Ali is a God. And maybe some of you don't know, and we've discussed this many times in the past, but uh, some of the extreme Shias, they believe that Ali is a God. Their leader, Abdullah ibn Saba, he went to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and said, you are God in truth, you are truly Allah. But he was actually a Jew and he entered into Islam with the intention to uh, claim, uh, uh, you know, uh, appreciation and veneration to the people, the household of the Prophet Sallallahu in order to corrupt Islam upon its people. وقال إن هذا صنع كما صنع بولس حين دخل في دين النصارى ليفسد يفسد دين النصارى. he said he did exactly what Paul did to Christianity. and maybe a lot of you might be aware. I'm I'm an adamant fan of of أحمد ديدات رحمه الله. and أحمد ديدات we're not going he's he passed away. we're not someone that you learn عقيدة from. and we're not here to pick his mistakes. but in terms of what he did to bring awareness to, to the Christians about the reality of their religion is something that is unprecedented in, in the history of mankind as far as I know. And I still listen to his debates and learn from the points of arguments. Uh, and if you really pay attention, you will see how Paul changed Christianity to what it is today and, and their monotheism, their tawheed was gone down a drain. The average Christian does not know how to explain Trinity, no matter how intelligent he is. It will never make sense, it doesn't make sense, it, you cannot make sense out of it. And uh, Paul, it's, it's a Pauline religion, they're following Paul. And Abdullah ibn Sabah did the same thing to Islam. هذا الرجل Abdullah ibn Sabah قال لي علي أنت الله حقا. He said to him, you are Allah truthfully. وعلي ibn Abi Talib لا يرضى أن أحدا ينزله فوق منزلته هو حتى إنه رضي عنه من إنصاف وعدل وعلم وخبرته كما يقول على من بركوفة Ali would never agree that anyone will put him above his position. In fact, out of his justice and fairness and knowledge and expertise, he used to say on the minbar in Kufa, and verily the best of this ummah after its prophet is Abu Bakr, then Umar. He used to announce this during his khutbah. We have, we have ample... Uh, uh, Evidences and chains of narrations referring back to him uh, making that statement. والذي يقول هكذا ويقر بالفضل لآلي من البشر كيف يرضى أن يقول يقول له قائل إنك أنت الله. If someone is so fair and just in in his statement about Abu Bakr and Umar, how would he agree that anyone will call him Allah? ولهذا عزرهم أبشع تعزير. He 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 gave him the strongest kind of severe punishment. أمر بالأخاديد فخدت. He asked for the rent. What do you call it? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الأخدود. I'm missing the word. Anyways, when you dig, when you dig in the ground, the word will come to me later, inshallah. ثم ملئت حطبا. Then it was filled with with wood. وأوقدت. Then it was lit on fire. ثم أتى بهؤلاء فقذفهم في النار. Then it came. 
uh, it's a trench, yeah, trench, Then it was, uh, it was lit and he burned them in it. Because that, that statement of theirs was so, so violent and so extreme. And we seek refuge with Allah. It is not something that is uh, small. وَيُقَالْ إِنَّ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنِ سَبَعَ هَرَبَ وَلَيْهِ مِنْ سُكُوهُ Some say that he was able to escape and they were not able to catch him. المهم أن علي بن أبي طالب عنه أحرق السبيئة بالنار لأنهم ادعوا فيه الألوهية. So he, the bottom line is that he burned them with the fire because they claim that he was Allah سبحانه وتعالى. السبائية عفوا. نعم السبائية. Uh, in reference to عبد الله بن سبع. فنقول كل من كان من أهل القبلة لا ينكرون هذين النوعين من التوحيد وهما توحيد الربوبية وتوحيد الألوهية وإن كان يوجد في بعض أهل البدع من يؤله أحد من البشر So fundamentally the, the people don't differ on توحيد الربوبية توحيد الألوهية even though we have some deviant sects that have given the title of إله to some of the creation like of course the uh, nation of Islam and some of these uh, five percenters or whatever they call them uh, you know Elijah Muhammad and all that stuff I mean they, they, they went on some other stuff they, they cannot even be called Muslims to begin with however the matter which has a lot of differing about uh, from among the people of the Qibla meaning those who pray to the Qibla is the third type of Tawheed, the Tawheed of the names and attributes or qualities of Allah. This is where a lot of girgir, as they say, a lot of talking has taken place. The people have, divided, have been divided into three areas. Those are very technical terms. They're very exciting. I would like to start explaining them, but I shouldn't. I'm going to have that be your homework, inshallah. I want you to try to deduce from the text and from your research, uh, not by referring to my audio classes on the same subject. What is a mumathil? And if you look it up on Google, mumathil is an actor. So be careful, huh? Because the term has many meanings depending on the context. And mu'attil... Uh, what is a mu'attil and what is a mu'tadil? And then mu'attil could be either a mukathib or muharrif. A lot of terms, they are going to set the stage for the rest of the book. This is the most important aspect. So I want you to understand it because from there we're going to discuss uh, uh, khawarij and so on and so forth and, and so on and, you know, and the list goes on. We're a few minutes away from conclusion and I don't want to go overboard. I know a lot of people have to prepare for the, prepare for the iftar, including myself. Uh, I'm going to check if there are any uh, urgent questions here that anyone has. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't want to mute. To be, I muted all, but some I left the option that you can unmute and some people just unmuted. Alhamdulillah, no issue. Uh, it's a mistake, it happens. It's in the book, uh, uh, Ya Muhammad, Habibi. Download the PDF. Uh, download the PDF. And then you can find the words over there. It is Mumathil. Uh, I just told you, I'll tell it to you again. It is Mumathil, Mu'attil, and Mu'tadil. Wasitiya uh, is in reference to an area called Wasit. So let's say uh, if you're from Jeddah, and you have, uh, you make a kanafa, we call it al-kunafa jiddawiya, the jiddawi kanafa. So al-aqidah al wasitiya the aqidah of wasit in reference to an area, it's a place, it's a place. Alright, it's on page 29, chief. Tayyip, um, if there are any questions relevant to the, from the things I've explained that are not clear, this is your time to address them, otherwise we'll wrap up inshallah and we'll see you next Friday with the upcoming class bi'idhillah azza wa jal. What is it? So let Musab read it for me. Let me see if I can get Facebook here. Are you going to be translating everything from the book? Um, am, am I going to be translating everything from the book? Uh, yani I would say 90%. Um, there are some things which if I were to go word for word they will take a long time 
and then they might not be relevant to everybody, especially in the grammar area. The Shaykh will, will go grammatically deep. Um, and not everybody knows grammar, let alone Arabic. So if I were to delve into those and translate them, it will just be exhausting for all of us. So I would say I will be translating, inshallah, the vast majority of the book, the, 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 the actual important areas, everything, maybe 90%, 95%, only 5%. Like today, I skipped a couple of things here and there, which I found to be redundant, and, and that's it. Uh, for the most part, everything will be translated, inshallah. Yes, uh, the question says, uh, you mentioned worship was built on love and veneration. Could you explain this point? Yeah, basically, brother, when you worship Allah, uh, uh, one half of you, if I may say, is worshiping Allah out of love because Allah is, is the one who gave you everything you have. Allah blessed you with Islam. Allah blessed you with, with, with uh, sustenance. Allah blessed you with being a Muslim. Allah blessed you with an opportunity to go to paradise. It's... You, you have love for Allah for, for His names and attributes. Allah Azza wa Jal being Al Azim, Al Jalil, Al Mateen, Al Qawi, all of the attributes of Allah make you love Him. Like right now, if you describe any kind of person with good qualities, you know this person, you say he's generous, he's kind, he's benevolent, you, you automatically love this person without even knowing who he is because of the qualities they possess. What about Allah Azza wa Jal who possesses the most bu beautiful attributes and the most beautiful qualities? So naturally, you will love Him. And uh, so that's it. And the other half is fear. Because if you don't do what, is, uh, what you're told to do, then you're, you might be punished. Because Allah Azza wa Jal has the ability to punish you. So that's how you uh, bring a relation between both, inshallah. Between hope and fear. Yani. So we'll call it a day. Anyway, Zakumullah khair. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you all for, for tuning in. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa ant. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka tu bilaik. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.